The Minister's Tale Unfolds, Merchant, chuckles at the sight of the bull's jubilation. Wife, curious. What brings such mirth to your heart, my love? Why does the bull leap with such joy? Merchant, pauses, his laughter subsiding. It is something I have witnessed, my dear, something I cannot share. For if I were to reveal it, death would surely befall me. Wife, earnestly. Death? What could be so dire that you cannot share it with your wife, the mother of your children? I implore you, tell me. Even if death awaits, I must know. Merchant. Hesitates, torn between love and fear, asterisk I cannot, my dear. The consequences are too grave. Wife. Insistent. You laughed at me, didn't you? That's why you won't tell me. Merchant. Sighs. No, my love, it's not that. But the burden is heavy and the risk too great. Wife. Determined. I will not relent. You must tell me. I will not rest until I know the truth. Merchant. Resigned. Very well, then. I shall gather the judge and witnesses, for I must reveal this secret before I depart this world. Wife. Concerned. Depart? What do you mean? Merchant. With affection. My dear, I love you dearly, but this secret is my undoing. If I speak it, I shall surely meet my end. And so I prepare to leave this world, but not without leaving you the truth. Wife. Shocked. No, my love, you cannot leave me. I cannot bear the thought of losing you. Merchant. Embracing her. Fear not, my dear. Our love shall endure, even beyond the veil of death. But first I must gather our kin and neighbors, for they too must know of the consequences of my revelation. And so, amidst tears and embraces, the merchant prepared to unveil the secret that weighed heavy upon his heart, his love for his wife shining people. Concerned murmurs. Please, madam, spare yourself the agony. Your husband's life hangs in the balance. Let this matter rest. Wife, firm resolve. I cannot abandon him in his hour of need. Even if it costs him his life, I must know the truth. People, silent resignation. She is resolute in her decision. We cannot sway her. Merchant, returns from washing. My dear wife, I have made my peace. It is time. Wife, eager anticipation. Tell me, my love, before it's too late. Merchant, gathers his strength. Long ago, I made a pact. If this secret were to be revealed, death would follow. But my love for you compels me to speak. Listen closely, for time is fleeting. But I have to wash first and go to the animal house merchant. Enters the animal house, greeted by the sounds of his livestock dog. Barking, you, rooster. You revel in your freedom while our master lies on his deathbed. Rooster. Curiously. What do you mean, my friend? Dog. Grimly, let me tell you a tale of our master's demise. Rooster, attentively pray, enlighten me. Dog, relaying the story. Our master, in his weakness of mind, faces marital strife. He knows not how to handle his wife's demands, the rooster. By God, our friend is weak-minded. I have fifty wives, and I satisfy one of them. He made the other angry, and he only had one wife, minister, the merchant, with cunning veiled, fashioned a long stick for his wife, concealed it within their chamber, and bid her enter, saying, Come, let me recount a tale where none may witness my final moments. Scheherazade. And then? Minister. She, trusting, followed him within, and as the door closed, he unleashed his fury upon her until she succumbed to unconsciousness. Scheherazade. How dreadful! Minister. Indeed, but in the aftermath, the wife, in a moment of clarity, beseeched her husband, Speak not of this, I rue my insistence. With contrite kisses upon his hands and feet, she sought forgiveness. Together they emerged, she proclaiming her remorse to the people. Thus they dwelled henceforth in tranquil joy until their final breaths. Scheherazade, a tale of woe turned to one of redemption. Such is the power of repentance and forgiveness.
Minister. Indeed, my daughter. In every story there lies a lesson, awaiting discovery by those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Minister's daughter. I must wed King Shariar, and I must embark on this journey of adventure and sacrifice. Minister. Then prepare yourself, my daughter, for the path ahead is fraught with peril and possibility. The minister readies his daughter for her union with King Shariar and presents her before the king. She has dusk descended upon the palace, Scheherazade stood before her father, the minister, her heart a mix of apprehension and resolve. Together they made their way to the king's chambers, where Shariar awaited. Minister, O king, I come bearing that which you seek. King Shariar, Ah, minister, you bring tidings of joy. Speak, what news do you bring? The king's countenance brightened at the sight of Scheherazade, his intended bride. Minister, I present to you, O King Scheherazade, ready to fulfill your needs. After spending an intimate night between the king and his new wife, Scheherazade, at midnight, Scheherazade's eyes glistened with unshed tears. King Shariar, Why do you weep, my dear Scheherazade? Scheherazade, O king, forgive my tears. I wish to bid farewell to my beloved sister. Touched by her sentiment, the king acquiesced to her request. King Shariar, bring forth Dunyazad, that she may bid her sister farewell. Soon Dunyazad was by Scheherazade's side, enveloping her in a warm embrace. Dunyazad, sister, tell us a story that dissipates the darkness of this night. Scheherazade said, Welcome if the kind king permits me. The king, burdened by his own worries, found solace in the prospect of their dialogue. King Shariar, the first night, the story of the merchant and the goblin. As the night unfurled its darkened cloak over the land, Scheherazade began her tale, weaving a tapestry of intrigue and wonder for her husband, the king. Scheherazade, O oh, illustrious king, I have heard tell of a merchant, blessed with wealth and prosperity, who embarked on a journey to a distant land. Within the confines of her storytelling, Scheherazade's voice carried the weight of centuries past, her words painting vivid pictures in the mind of the listener. In the sweltering heat of the day, the merchant sought respite beneath a tree, where he partook of his meager provisions. The scene unfolded like a painting in the minds of all who listened, transporting them to a world where reality and fantasy intertwined. But his tranquility was shattered by the appearance of a towering goblin brandishing a gleaming sword. Goblin, prepare to meet your end, merchant, for you have slain my son. Fear gripped the merchant's heart as he faced the wrathful specter before him. Merchant, how could I have slain your son, noble goblin? Goblin, by casting aside the date's pit, you unwittingly brought about his demise as it lodged within his chest and claimed his life. The tension hung heavy in the air as the merchant pleaded for his life, promising to settle all his debts and fulfill his obligations before returning to meet his fate. Merchant, grant me the chance to right my wrongs, O goblin, and I shall return to face whatever punishment you deem fit. With a solemn oath, the goblin released the merchant, who hastened as the new year dawned, the merchant found himself once more beneath the same tree where his fate had been sealed. While the merchant was under the shade of the tree waiting for his fate, an old sheikh came to him with a deer that he tied with a chain and walked with him. The arrival of the mysterious old man signaled a turning point in the merchant's tale as fate's hand continued to weave its intricate design. Old man, why do you linger in this place, traveler, where the jinn holds sway? Merchant, I am but a hapless wanderer, burdened by the weight of my misdeeds and the specter of impending doom. And thus, amidst the whispers of the rustling of leaves, the merchant poured out his tale to the wise old man, seeking solace and guidance in the face of his dire predicament. 